Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update. So in part 1 I've decided I'm going to start at the sun, basically at the sun and work my way outwards. So looking looking at the uh, the solar system, we start at the sun. We're going to, so we're going to talk about Agnea first, not just because I'm there but because it's the nearest to the sun as well and that's totally the justification I'm using and I'm sure that's plenty. And then I'll work out to Norvis and so on over the rest of the, uh, the videos. So um, yes, this is this is Agnea. Um, in the last in the last stream, I, I uh, went in. I put in some of the defences that are needed. So we've got. Um, I put in. Well, I've made a start on them at least. So we've got some um, water tanks here that are collecting water that's coming in. That's being brought in by as, as ice from the um, from over on uh, Norvis. So we've got we've got a system on Norvis which I'll show you in, which I've showed you last week, but I'll, I'll mention it again in uh, later. Which is turning uh, cryonite and sulfuric acid and water into blocks of ice, which you can then ship over here by delivery cannon. And this is quite an efficient process because if we look at the recipes for this. We'll see that each water ice, uh, one water ice can be turned into 100 water, and it takes 200 water. So it, one water ice is worth two is worth two is worth 100 water, and it stacks up to 200 as well. So a stack of water ice is to is 20,000 water, and that's very that's that's a lot. That means for each each delivery that comes in by delivery cannon, we can fill up we can almost fill one of these tanks because these are 25,000, and one stack of ice is 20,000. So it's really, really condensed and packed down and efficient, and a really efficient way of transporting it. Which is, of course, complete and utter nonsense, because as we all know, when you freeze water, it actually gets bigger. So, but uh, let's not worry about that too much. Uh, it is it is a nice way of transporting it around. So, yes, we're bringing that in uh, um, as as ice, and then pumping it down here once it's been melted into water. And we keep and the idea is to keep all of these tanks at, at about uh, 100,000. And the theory is that because these are condensing turbines, so this is a slightly different design for the... Um, uh, for the steam battery to what you're used to seeing, because these are uh, condensing turbines, 99% of the of the water, the steam that goes in, will be pretty returned as water. So in theory, it should be able to go round and round and round and round forever. Now the idea behind this system is that we've got the boilers down here that are converting the water into steam, storing it in these tanks, and then if and then overnight, um, it, they'll keep the uh, the meteor defence guns running. And if there's a um, a coronal mass ejection, then the um, the steam in these tanks will be used to power the uh, umbrella defence here, and we'll sa and we'll save the um, save the save the planet from being hit by the coronal mass ejection. The problem is these tanks aren't really filling up very much. Uh, they've been, this, this system's been down for ages, and there's okay some of the ones at the bottom that don't have any um, turbines running off them have got uh, several thousand in them, but they're not filling up anything like as quickly as I was hoping. And that's because the night on this planet is really really long, and these meteor defence installations are really really power hungry. So as you can see, we've got 45 megawatts being pulled through by the um, by, by the uh, turbines. But if we look over a slightly longer time period, yeah, you can see there's huge amounts of power being pulled through by the turbines and by the umbrella defence. Um, and that doesn't seem, and it's just not being, it's it's not enough. So we we haven't got enough power available here. I've also put in a massive massive area of solar. As you can see, we've now got I don't know how many solar panels. Let's have a look. Uh, 3,800 solar panels, and it's not providing enough power for the for the demands of the base. Now I can come in and um, if I cut off the uh, the defences down here completely by cutting where is the cable? I think it, I think it's one somewhere here. Yeah, here it is. So if I cut off this cable here, then we'll find that the the system is just about satisfied. Now we do have we have enough power to power all of the core mining and all the processing that's going on, but we can't defend the planet. So. I'm pretty much throwing in the towel on the solar at this point, I think. I've put down, as you can see, I've put down in, in a huge quantity of solar. There's a little patch of accumulators which are basically useless. And there's a steam battery over here which is helping, but it's, more, it's better than the accumulators, I feel. But it's still, it's, it, there's not enough power to keep everything happy. Now, I could go down, I could go in and put in an, another another three or four thousand solar panels and then have, and then reckon on that be and then reckon on charging up the steam battery over here to use that to, to, to uh, keep, keep everything going during the night um, but at that point I'm starting to think that maybe maybe uh, may, maybe this maybe the idea of solar and having the base go to sleep at night isn't really going to work because we can't keep the um, the the uh, the meteor defense guns and the and the umbrella defense satisfied with that it's just not realistic and so actually maybe I'm thinking that the next step might be to go nuclear on this planet so we've got the ice being brought in here which means we have a supply of relatively cheap water so 
hopefully that will be enough to keep things uh, keep it ticking over without having a ridiculous number of um, deliveries coming in and somebody in the discord did the maths on it and they reckon that if you have a um, if you have a, a a nuclear power plant generating one, the full 1.2 gigawatts you can get by from a 2 by 2 uh, set of reactors then that then that um, which is more about three times the amount of power I'm trying to use at the moment so maybe almost four times the amount of power I'm trying to use at the moment that sh that should get through about a delivery cannon's worth of ice every 5 minutes or so so at this point, I'd be getting through a delivery cannon's worth of ice every 20 minutes, maybe, um, and that seems to be reason. Re that seems to be acceptable, especially as we're going to be producing some of the power from the all of solar still. So yes, I think putting in a nuclear power plant somewhere on this planet would be a good idea, and that and uh, running it off off the ice we brought in, which would be expensive at first, but then it'll calm down a bit. Especially now that I've um, started building these uh, condensing boilers over on Norvis, I've got those being made in large quantities, uh, very very slowly, admittedly, but they will be made in large quantities eventually. So I can ship a load more of those over, get it set up for the nuclear power plant, and uh, then hopefully things will be about right and then we'll be able to have enough power on this planet and the re part of the reason this planet is demanding so much power is not just because of all of these d d defenses against stuff that comes from space but also i've been expanding out the number of core mining drills so you can see now i've got this uh, rail system so instead of just going down to here and going to this core pickup and, and and the mine here and i think there's one here as well all of which i have now incidentally finished off and put in all of the uh, all of the loaders so these are now working properly I've also branched out to have another load of core mines up here. So I think I've now got a total of nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelve of them. Uh, so we're making we're making the uh, core chunks at a significantly faster rate than we were before. But because of the um, because of the way that these core mines work, it means each individual core mine is now running relatively slowly. But we are still producing at a an accept, reasonably acceptable rate we've got to the point where there's now 4.2 thousand in this in this uh, station the others are probably all going to be fairly similar because they all seem to be more or less in sync which is a little bit silly because it means instead of having a steady flow of vulcanite core fragments coming in uh, every so often it just gets incredibly busy that said i've made some changes down here as well so we've got we've got about four thousand four or five thousand core chunks here and they're all uh, flowing out into the system so the changes I've made, I finally got around to starting to use beacons. So I've got some beacons in here with the speed modules, and that means I don't need as many of these pulverizers as I would otherwise. Now, it does use more power, but power is something that I feel I should be able to deal with. It does take a lot of, it's going to take a lot of water, sure, but I'm going to be able to eventually deal with that. And we've basically got enough here now that we've, we've got a steady flow of almost two red belts coming through here. And so the idea is over here, we've now got a load of pulverizers that are dealing with all of that vulcanite ore turning that into the in, into the other uh, crush vulcanite and there's now coming hopefully it's now coming through at a steady a steady fast enough rate that we can keep this running more or less constantly we've got a steady stream of uh, vulcanite coming out down here and we've got two and a half thousand in this warehouse and that means as you can uh, as you can sort of see we are producing the vulcanite cubes faster than we're shipping them out I'm very carefully saying faster than we're shipping them out, not faster than they're being used, because despite the fact that we've got two cannons firing away merrily at Norvis, we still don't have as much as we'd like. So these these cannons are all these these first two cannons are both both firing at Norvis. There's there's a um, a delivery cannon chest over there that's accepted. Um, they're firing off, as you can see, in fairly qu in quick succession like that, and then that's all getting turned into pyroflux because we're getting through crazy crazy amounts of pyroflux over on Norvis. But you know, one thing at a time. So yes, we've got two cannons shipping it there. One cannon will be shipping it to Norbit as and when it's needed. At the moment, it's... Oh, no, sorry, it's to Njord. We're also shipping it out to Njord. Um, we would ship it to Norbit's orbit if it was needed. We can ship it off to other places as well. This is all set up and ready to go, but there aren't many other places that need it yet. We still also have all of the setup on Taishakuten that's shipping out uh, Vulcanite to both... Um, Norvis and Norbit, so there's so we've got sort of twice as much coming going going through, and um, hopefully we're going to go. No, we've got it coming through from two places, and well, we'll we'll see how things go. <laughs> At the moment, it's still just not enough, um, and the question is whether delivery cannons are good enough to to keep to keep the system happy, um, which will we, we we shall sort of gradually see about. So yes, three Vulcan, three can well two cannons here shipping it off to off to Norvis to to keep the system reasonably happy. The problem currently seems to be how many of these um, delivery cannon capsules we have coming round. So they are they are flowing through and they are being loaded into the into the delivery cannon. So they they do keep firing, um, but up here we're not bringing them in. We're not making them quite as quickly as we'd like to. Possibly I should turn on. So over here we do have the um, the system here where we can I can turn this on if I want to to get in the supplies of all of the things that we want to come in. Um, however, it looks like we have. I was going to say it looks like we have more copper than we know what to do with. We actually seem to be okay for copper at the moment. The, the copper is 
the copper supply seems to be fairly well balanced so in here we should have a supply of all of the things we need in order to make the delivery cannon capsules but we seem to be out of explosives um, and that is maybe down to the plastic I mean, I'm, not, I'm not sure but what we can do is I can fl flick a switch over here and then we will start to receive delivery cannon parts that we're short of shipped over from Norvis so we'll see at the moment we see oh there we go that, that was a load of probably the explosives came in now so we can now make a load more delivery cannons capsules we can start to make these a bit quicker and things will hopefully now start to be a bit more a bit more reliable and we'll get all of the stuff we need I'm trying to work out why we have such a shortage of explosives and it seems to be because we don't have enough coal coming through which is a bit odd because the whole system is supposed to be nicely balanced uh, that said, we don't have a backup of the um, a backlog of core chunks forming, so I think it probably is balanced. We're just um, I'm just being a little bit impatient. But the thing is, turning this on means yes, sure, we are getting stuff shipped in by um, uh, by delivery cannon from Norvis, but we should never. But, but this should always make sure that we never have. We'll always be using the stuff made on planet by priority. It will only do that when there's a um, when there's a shortage. Part of the reason we have a shortage of delivery cannon capsules at the moment is because I've been sending off enormous quantities of sand to Tristan. So he's over on Njord and he has a process that requires crazy, crazy amounts of sand. So what I've done over here is I've set up this system which is a little bit of a tangled web of nonsense but it does work where we've got a supply of sand coming out of this crusher up here which is dealing with the, the, uh, the stone that's produced by the, um, by, by, the, by the ore processing system. And also I could, if I wanted, chuck in a load of stone, that I've, all of this stone that has been generated by me do, doing my uh, setting up of it, well everything. But anyway, the sand then comes down here, and as fast as possible, we will then end up dealing with it. So it all goes into this chest here, and when this chest is full, it's allowed to flow into this um, into this furnace, which will turn it into glass, which is the glass into the furnace. But if there's ever a um, if there's ever if we ever start to run a little bit lower on it, we'll prioritise sending it over into this one, which will send it off to um, off to Njord. Just as you can see, these things are firing at quite quite the rate. We're also trying to use up all of, there's also a bit of a stone backlog in here that's been generated from earlier on when I was process, doing, doing the processing here and had set, hadn't got everything set up properly yet. So we've got quite a lot of stone and quite a lot of rare metals just trying to make its way out, going through this pulverizer, which also goes into this chest, again, so we can deal with, with it in a sensible priority order. Um, it's, it's struggling a bit at the moment, but I think having turned this this on to we'll get a lot more delivery cannon capsules through um, is going to is, is going to help a lot. Did that make sense? Um, yeah. So we'll have a lot more delivery cannon capsules available for shipping out the uh, the sand off to Njord, um, and that will help a lot because we'll then just, basically we'll be able to get through a load of the sand. We'll get through all of the backlog of stone that's coming through here, and eventually then the system will calm down. Things will start to work a bit more smoothly, and we'll get rid of all of the, the junk base. Not not to put too fine a point on it that we don't want and we're trying to get rid of. As you can see here, there's some of the raw rare metals coming through to be cooked, to cooked rare metals to also be shipped off to Norvis. We've got all, of the, all this stuff. We're just trying, basically just trying to get rid of it all. And, and yes, we have we have serious backlogs. But it is it is working reasonably well to send some bit off to Tristan. Part of the reason I've been able to build up all this extra stuff is because I, I I requested another rocket that had all of the all the useful bits and pieces that I needed to get everything set up around here. So all the bits that I'd forgotten, like these signal receivers and loads more extra rail and the the loaders in order to fill up these warehouses, all that sort of stuff. I mean, to be fair, those could be done just as easily by um, inserters at the rate that's coming through. But you know, it was a design I was copying over around, so it, was, it seemed best to keep keep it as it was. So I, I got all the stuff I needed for for that expansion, and that also enabled me to do all of the all of this solar as well. So things are going quite well. With, with all of that. It is really just the power here that's the problem. I also had a little bit of a fiddle with the balance of number of machines over here, put in some more pulverizers and things. So this is this has been accelerated slightly. I think the next thing to do is going to be to have another copy of basically all of this, but not the warehouse. Can I get it but not the warehouse? No, I can't. Basically all of this. Uh, put that in over here, like that. And then we'll feed another belt from here, round like this, round the top. Oops. That's not remotely what I meant to do, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. None of this is going to be saved. So we'll feed that round here, and then we'll do the same sort of thing over here with the uh, the belts coming down, down like this, joining them together, and then passing all of this into also into this into this warehouse over here. And maybe at some point we'll then put in a, a, in some more um, pulverization, pulverizing as well, because this isn't quite. I mean, these belts aren't quite full, so this this might be this this could just mean we end up with too much of everything. But this would then come over here like this and be fed into there. 
So we do something something like that in order to um, get all of the all of the all of the uh, get, basically to get the vulcanite being processed at a slightly faster rate because at the moment we don't we don't have as much coming through as we need. I'll then be able to put in more more delivery cannons down here, probably all firing at Norbis because that's where everything seems to be needed at the moment. There's probably going to be more stuff I need for this that we haven't got yet. So this is going to be that's going to be one of the expansions I do. That is also then going to demand lots more power, so I will then also be needing to um, set up uh, another. It's going to demand a lot more power, so that's why I'll need the nuclear power plant, because at this point, solar just doesn't seem to be cutting it. So yes, that's Agnea. Things are going. I think they're going reasonably well, but there is definitely a lot more work to do here in order to get the sort of rate of, of, um, of, um, of Vulcanite coming out that we would like. One of the other things that's been suggested a few times, and I am sort of tempted to do, is to start set, is to set up um, just straightforward normal mining on maybe patches like this one where there's 25 million of it, or here where there's another 20 million, or over here with yeah, there's quite a lot of vulcanite just in normal vulcanite patches, and I could mine that up now. The downside of that is it breaks the nice neat system we have going on over here where we pull in the core fragments, turn them into um, delivery cannons, and use that to ship the stuff out. But that seems to be at the moment it's it's not broken at the moment. But it is having to be topped up in order to deal with the backlogs of sand in a, in a, in a reasonably sensible and quick way. Um, and I'm doing that, as you can see, there's massive, basically there's massive quantities of explosives falling in out of the sky from coming, being sent over from Norvis. And that sort of, yeah, it, it spoils the nice neatness of it. But the sheer quantity of vulcanite that is required by, well, by, by Norvis especially, I think make, makes me sort of feel that maybe we should be doing this in a slightly more effective way and I can't be quite so um, quite so proud of just keeping everything that to just just doing everything from core mining so I think I may have to um, accept accept defeat here and go and allow and allow the system to um, to run with uh, on, on supplies brought in from the other planet I mean I'm already doing that to an extent on um, on Talos because we're bringing in, in uh, the everything that requires oil from there uh, just because you can't you can't do it on Talos without because there is no basically no oil on the planet. Uh, so so over here, having this sped up a little bit is is probably acceptable. It's it's not quite as pure with the uh, challenge as I was intending to go, but I, I but I, I think I'm kind of okay with that. We are still building up the entire system around delivery cannons rather than using rockets just yet, um, which is one of the other things I was trying to do. I want to use I don't want to, I want to try and minimize the use of rockets and just move on move on to spaceships when we're when we're ready for that. Um, so yeah, I think at the moment things are sort of, sort of okay. Um, oh, and there we go. The um, the vulcanite supply has dried up now. So, I, but the train has gone off to go and get some. So it's only going to be a temporary um, temporary problem here. I can't see where it's gone. But the train has gone off to go and collect some more uh, from from somewhere. Speaking of Norvis, let's let's move let's move on there and see what's been been going on on on, on Norvis itself. So, as usual, Mark has been busy on Norvis, let's turn, and has been has been imp improving and, uh, and expanding things. So, what, what's what's been going on? Well, the big the big win this time, I think, is that he's put in a new copper processing facility, and I have no idea where he's put it. And I should have looked to this before I started recording the video. Here we go. So there's a new copper smelting facility up here, and this this is a, a pyroflux based one. So he's bringing in pyroflux by train, as you've seen before with the iron system. Um, but now this is bringing in copper. Um, uh, copper ore here um, and do we have a prioritization system set up I'm not quite sure if we do I hope we do because we're supposed to um, but anyway he's bringing in the copper ore to here that's all being passed up here and now we're doing the we're doing the enrichment stage which is which requires the sulfuric acid which again presumably is being brought in by train yes it is from there so we're we're, uh, we're we're doing that stage here, and he's got oh he's got on-site um, water cleaning as well. So the so the dirty water comes straight out of here. It's turned into um, sand and uh, sorry st stone and copper and clean water. Clean water goes straight back round again into the system. There's presumably a top up available somewhere. I'm not sure where because you always lose a little bit of it. Um, I would expect there is, but I don't see where that's coming from. Because I think you always lose a little bit. Um, yeah, so you put in 100 dirty water, you get 90 clean water out. Whereas over here, you put in 25 water and you get 25 dirty water out. So we all... Oh, okay, over here, yes, there's a um, there's a tank here that's being presumably... Ah, yes, filled up from this duct. So there's a massive quantity of water being brought in along this duct from the lake over here. So you can see we've got a handful of... Um, got six, six pumps all pumping into one duct intake. Pumping it all down the duct over here. And then each of these areas is split, pulling a little bit of it out that is then passing into the... Um, into the system here. What's this? Oh, it's constant company. Oh, okay. Um, 
No, wait, what? It's gone to the combinator. They're outputting 391 water. And this is pumping. I don't know what that... I don't know what these combinators... Oh, these combinators are just labels to say what all the different pipes are for. Okay, that's fair enough. So, yes, water is coming in here and being pumped into here. So, when there's less than 5,000 water in the tank, it'll, it'll top it up a bit. Um, but generally, it, the, uh, the water will just flow round and round and round with occasional top up being put in. But that's not the exciting part. The exciting part is we're then taking the enriched vulcanite up here, where we are then cooking it with pyroflux. And that's the, the, this, is, this is the exciting part, and the bit we weren't doing before, because we didn't have very much pyroflux. And this enables us to turn it into molten copper, which can then come up here and be turned into copper ingots. The copper ingots can then uh, be passed all the way around. Uh, oh, and down and down, down through here. Okay, there's a belt down the middle of it. That's, this is an interesting layout, but sure, uh, whatever. Uh, being passed down here. Some of it's being put into a train down here, so we can now start requesting copper ingots, and that means our um, our logistics can be a lot more efficient. Because as we discussed before, whilst the copper ingots only stack to 50, but the plates stack to 100. The copper, each copper ingot can be turned into 10, I think, 10 copper plates um, at the other end. We'll, we'll check that here, because here we go. We've got, um, yes, each each ingot turns into 10 copper plates. So this is five times more efficient. This carries five times as much copper per train or per spa rocket or per spaceship or whatever. So we'll, as we start shipping this up into orbit, especially, where this is where it's really important, then we can, start, we, can, we can ship it up in ingot form and then slice it up into the copper plates in orbit and therefore reduce our logistics costs quite significantly. We've already done this in the past with both the iron and the steel, so now moving it, doing that with the copper as well, expands it out so we've got we've got the more efficient process, uh, transport system going for all three of the, those metals now. Is steel a metal? Is it an alloy? Who knows? We, I think we had a discussion about this when we were reading the Mistborn books. I think we decided it, it is technically an alloy of um, iron and, co and, and um, carbon. But anyway, that's, that doesn't matter. The point of this is that we've, we've now got it being transported in that more efficient way. But also, we're able to chuck in a lot more productivity modules now. So as you can see, we've got... Yes, it's only tier 2s all the way through. But that means we've, we've still got... We've got a um, plus 18% there. And we've got a plus... 30% there, and sadly you can't put productivity modules into into a casting machine. But still, we've got we've got those two, and I'll multiply the numbers together and put the total on screen now, so you can see how how much of an improvement it is. And that is quite a lot of extra free copper, and that's nice because we're getting through crazy crazy amounts of copper, and it's kind of getting getting kind of pricey to dig it all up. While I'm up here and I've just noticed it, um, here is another delivery cannon capsule area. So delivery cannon capsules are being brought in by train, as is stone, which is then being pulverised into sand and then shipped off by, uh, to Tristan on the Njord, presumably, uh, yes, by delivery cannon. Because Tristan has a massive shortage of sand, as I've been saying repeatedly, so we, we're all basically trying to send sand out to him as, as fast as we possibly can in an attempt to keep him um, supplied with it as best as we can. So over here, yeah, uh, oh, okay. So the way this is works, so so I'm shipping it out if the signal goes below zero. Mark is shipping it out if it goes below seven minus seven hundred. So by priority, he'll use the sand that comes from my overflow, which makes a lot of sense because I just want to get rid of it. But then if we, if, if I start to run out of sand or Tristan's using it up too quickly, then and the signal gets all the way down to minus 700, which means he's practically run out in his delivery cannon chest, then Mark will start to ship it from here as well, so there'll be another supply going out. So we've got the various different priority levels to ensure that uh, the sand gets used up in a sensible order. Because um, over here, this stone is coming in from probably from stone mines, so we don't really want to be using this up if we can avoid it. We'd much rather use stuff that I'm just trying to get rid of because I'm getting it for free from my core mining. Mark also set up a new copper mine here. Um, I wonder if this had anything to do with where he was... Um, what's going on over here? Okay, there must have been a tiny patch of copper here. Yes, there's a tiny patch of copper here and here, and Mark is being a bit completionist, so he's come over to pick those up. And also a big, de a decent-sized copper mine here, which we're mining all that up. It's going into this warehouse here, and then we're feeding it up here into the into the into the uh, in, in, into the station to be to be used. And this is apparently a high priority one, which is a little bit wrong, but never mind. I so say I haven't looked into how the uh, prioritization of the um, copper. Uh, uh, copper ore drop off is going. I should probably have a think about that at some point, but I, it's going to be complicated, so I'm not going to look into it. And, uh, I'm going to let Mark tell me how it works and, and worry about it later. <laughs> Mark has set up a system for delivering heavy oil. That's what I'm going to guess that's coming from big oil down here, um, because that's where all the oil happens. Yes, here we go. So he's barreling up the um, the oil. Uh, he's using 
bots to bring the barrels over, which is naughty, but never mind. We'll uh, we'll, we'll let them off for now. Um, and then shipping out and shipping that out to anyone who needs heavy oil in order to kickstart their um, the, their uh, coal liquefaction state in there in, in, in on another planet because you need a bit of heavy oil for that, which is quite frustrating. Um, it means you need to basically take one barrel of heavy oil out, pour it into the machine, and then it's self-sufficient from then on. But uh, so you need that sort of you need that kickstart to get it bootstrapped. Uh, so that's there for that. He's extended the robot port coverage. Oh, good grief. How bad is this going to be? Right, okay. So now... <laughs> we've got an absolutely enormous robot port area covering, well, a significant portion of the base. Uh, this is kind of ridiculous because if you order anything up here, it's going to take probably two streams and therefore two weeks to actually arrive. But on the other hand, at least it will arrive, which it wouldn't otherwise. So... I, yeah, I probably wouldn't have done this myself, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't mind that he's done it. It just seems a little bit um, ridiculous. We almost need a more, um, more sensible way of doing this. But the problem is, we could use potentially use the ghost planner uh, for this sort of thing, um, and we have been a little bit for building. But the problem is, if you use the ghost planner too much, it causes a little stutter every so often when the uh, as the game's running. So if you watch you watch a train or a belt or something, occasionally you can see them stutter, and that's not not ideal. I think we've lowered the, how often it happens to once every couple of minutes at the moment, or every 20, 30 seconds. I can't remember exactly. So it's not as painful as it was when it was every two seconds, but it is still a little bit annoying and looks a bit, little bit weird. Uh, he's put water ice on the train network. Apparently, that's um interesting uh so it's here being picked up picked up by trains and um, we're very gradually filling up all of these warehouses which have almost none in at the moment but i don't think that i don't think that matters particularly it's somewhere we, we've got we've got a nice supply of cryonite coming in from tristan's moon of dracket uh We've got obviously we've got a plentiful supply of water. Well, actually, looking at these machines, we don't have a plentiful supply of water. They're um, eating up the water faster than it's available. That is the limiting factor here of how fa how fast we can pump this water in. So this is this is why the ducts are useful. But um, to be honest, this is a low priority system, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that, these this will gradually fill up. I don't think we have anywhere that's using water ice on Norvis yet. But you know, it could become useful. We am, if we get desperate, we might end up shipping it to um, to Norbit. But I kind of hope we won't. Uh, Mark has also made a new meteor defense blueprint. Um, that has been installed on Njord, but hasn't been. But the um, delivery cannons for it haven't been set up yet. So I'll talk about that in tomorrow's video when I go for a bit further out in, into the solar system and start talking about the um, the, the, the more distant planets. I think. Um, he's, uh, Mark has also extended the air purifiers to the northeast, so um, I can't see them. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, here we go. Is this going to be this belt here? <laughs> right. Okay. So we're now purifying all of this area up here, I guess. Um, yeah, good. I mean, it, 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 it's important because it keeps all of this pollution under control. Presumably over here we've got some air purifiers. Yeah, we've got the purifiers around here keeping this, this mine reasonably reasonably clean. It means, as you can see, this is why we, we've had so few biter attacks, basically. Because we are keeping all of our pollution inside our base through the through brute force using the air purifiers. And you can see down there, the pollution is trying to escape. But they're, um, <clears throat> they're clearing it up as fast as it, uh, as fast as it, as fast as it appears. Um, and yes, it's it's a bit ludicrous and, over, and possibly massive overkill, but it works and it means we're not getting attacked. So I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> it's better than going out and just spending enormous quantities of um, iron and copper and eventually steel and maybe uranium on bullets to keep the biters at bay. Or alternatively having to generate three times as much electricity in order to keep your lasers running all the time. Tristan's made a nice um, update on Norvis and I'm going to turn this off because having everything red like that is a bit annoying. Um, for the uh, area where we're making the... Um, uh, the the uh, silica the, the substrates for the memory cards, um, because we discovered a new recipe last time, um, and this one means we can now generate the uh, the substrates using rare metals. In, and I think this is an instead of something. So let's have a look. Let, 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 let's look at the recipes before I before I just start say, saying things and assuming I'm right. So the rough data substrates can be made from two glass, two silicon, and four iron, or they can be made from two glass, two silicon, two iron, and two rare metals. And that produces twice as many. So essentially, instead of being two, two, four, it's one, 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 and a rare metals. And we've got more rare metals than we know what to do with. So having something to sink them into is going to be fantastic. And having that save sand, uh, well, sand in the forms of glass and silicon, and also iron as well, is absolutely brilliant. This is this is great because we're using up something we don't want in order to save on things that we want lot to have lots and lots of. So this means we actually finally now have a have a a reasonable use for the rare metals. Okay, we are using them for blue circuits over here as well, but not in particularly large quantities. Uh, we've got another sink to use the rare metals on. So, we, but I imagine we've still probably got plenty of it over here. So, if we, yeah, looking in these, these um, 
all the storage systems over here are still basically full. We've we've had to stop the uh, production of them here because we need to make sure we have enough for what's being dropped in from the other planets. And over here, yeah, we are still abs. So even even with us now using rare metals for the uh, for the substrates and having pulled off a station's worth of them over over there, we've still got quite a lot over here that we just don't really know what to do with and we're presumably still turning lots and lots of it into um into landfill which feels like a shame i'm not going to lie about it we we are you we are we're churning it's churning through huge amounts of the uh, of the raw rare metals turning it all into landfill and just filling these chests up it feels kind of wasteful but there's just so much of it or so much of it coming out of the uh, core chunk of processing here that you know we need to do something with it it's got to go somewhere we we it, so we're just, yeah, the overflow is just going to be turning into into um, into landfill for basically for the rest for the rest of eternity. Uh, he's also dekinked the railway, he says, um, by the substrate factory. I mean, because I don't know what it looked like before, I don't know what it looks like now. Maybe, maybe there was maybe there was a wibble in the rail that was going round a mining patch or or some cliffs or something. So he's now just straightened that out. I I, I can't tell from the from the uh, from the um, from from the after view. So uh, I I, do, I just don't know. Okay, the next thing, and, and speaking of Tristan, the next thing to look at is Norvis Orbit, where he has been uh, working at least at least a little bit on the on the um, railway uh, on the space train blueprint system. So we now have um, it doesn't look that impressive, admittedly, but we've got a little bit more rail out here. He started to put out this is presumably um, yes, this is the uh, little patches of um, scaffolding with a with a robot port and a and a, uh, and a pylon perched precariously on each one. Presumably the tension in the cables is, is what's stopping these things drifting off into space. We'll have to assume that because nothing else is. And then we've got the rail system that's actually not connected to anything at all. But, you know, this this will grow out and it, this will grow up and we'll, we'll link it all together and we will eventually start to be able to have trains going around here. And then we'll be able to start moving the sciences around. And by that point, we will hopefully have all of the... Um, all of the exotic materials accumulated up here in Norvis orbit and being being shipped in by delivery cannon so we can actually start setting up all of the the proper science areas to get things doing running as we want them to and there's, there's lots and lots to do on that but um this will hopefully allow us to get this up and running as part of this he's also made some blueprints so if we're looking game blueprints and rails we now have in basics we have we have the space truck rail equivalents of the um of the of the uh, of the ground rail system does that make sense um we have yeah we have the space based equivalents of the of the of the rail systems we've got down on the ground presumably if we look in here we've also got the same going on in junction we've got a full we've got a full junction okay that's good enough um and possibly station no 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 space stations yet you know what i mean <laughs> space railway stations there we go um yes so that's 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 norbit not a lot has happened up here um we still have we still i think we're still do we're still probably doing science yeah we you've got hypercooling 3 trying to happen but what are we short of? We are short of um, who knows? Oh yeah, we're short of. We, okay, we're short of energy science one. Hmm. I wonder if that's a problem. Whether that's a holmium related issue. It's not a holmium related issue. It seems to be running. Stuff is 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 chugging away. Over here we have. Oh, well, we have a shortage of significant data, which is because. Oh well, it's, it's being made at the moment. Okay, so it seems like right now it, it is all working. We just seem to have a shortage of it for some reason. And that's odd because I thought this was producing it quickly enough for the rate we we're doing research, but but maybe it isn't. Maybe we actually need to produce it a bit a bit faster. Um, but we've just made made a few. They're going off down the down down one of the chutes over here. I'm not quite sure which one. Probably this one, uh, and they will be delivered off to do to do a little bit more science. So that will start that will carry on creeping up very very slowly. Right. So I think that's everything I have for you for today. We've um, we've we've worked our way out from the from the sun when actually nothing happening on the sun apart from you know a load of fusion. Um, we've, we've talked about Agnea. We've talked about Norvis. We've talked about Norvis orbit. So please come back tomorrow where I should be moving off to talk about the the, the, the more outer planets where at least a few things have been going on. So there, there'll hopefully be enough stuff to talk about there. Um, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It makes a big difference to how how well how well it'll do, how well the channel can grow. Uh, be much appreciated. And co yes, come back tomorrow for the um, for the catch up for the second half of this catch up video. And on Monday when we should be continuing with this, where I, um, I'll be ca carrying on with Agnea, maybe putting in that nuclear power plant I've been talking about. Uh, we'll get this, we'll get that up and running. Hopefully on Tuesday there will be a Factorio flavors video. Where where we should be talking about the Covarex system. Um, that'll be coming out for supporters on Tuesday. So if you're a channel supporter, you get early access to all of the videos. Uh, that means they come out on, on a, a week early for you, and you can get to get to see them um, before everybody else does. Uh, and it'll be coming out the week after for anyone else. 
on Wednesday, I should be continuing with my XCOM stream. It's, things are, I feel like things are going well. We, uh, I had a couple of missions where I didn't lose anybody, including a night terror mission, which was amazing. Not losing anyone on a nighttime terror mission is absolutely amazing. But then we still managed to get some soldiers slaughtered on a uh, what was supposed to be an absolute cakewalk afterwards. But, you know, <laughs> them's that, that's XCOM for you, isn't it, really? Um, then Thursday, there's GTA videos, as usual. And then back round to Friday when there'll be another one of these. So, uh, yep, yeah, please make sure you come along for all of that stuff. Please be subscribe to the channel, etc, etc, etc. Please check out the stream sponsor as well. That's uh, trefoil.be. They will host a, uh, a Minecraft or a Factorio or a Seven Days to Die or Minotaur, various other, various other game servers for you. And if you use the code LawrencePlays on checkout, you'll get 20% off. And the link is, of course, in the description. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.